Welcome to the Body Transformation Audio Seminar Day 9. Today we're going to be speaking about calories. Calories in, calories out. You've heard it before, but is it is the most tested, most reliable method for adequately determining and predicting fat loss. Now I say that with a caveat. Eating different foods can affect hormones in different ways. Eating uh, certain things like small amounts of saturated fat can be good for uh, testosterone production compared to eating, let's just say, uh, an isocaloric amount of sugar, which may raise blood sugar and then cause a insulin spike and blood sugar crash. Different hormonal levels can affect your metabolism slightly, but for the most part, we all burn pretty close to the same number of calories every day. I want to introduce something you may have heard of if you've spent any time online thinking about and researching diet, and that's the idea of the hormonal theory of uh, fat loss or diet versus the caloric model of diet or fat loss. I bring this up because there are a large number of popular individuals on YouTube now who uh, proclaim that um, ketogenic diets, which are quite popular right now, and I'm not knocking ketogenic diets, but they argue that the reason why ketogenic diets primarily work is because insulin uh, is the primary fat storage hormone in the body. And insulin is primarily released in response to eating dietary carbohydrates. And they claim that um, by reducing insulin, you're reducing a primary fat storage hormone in the body, and therefore you will reduce body fat. Or you will at least reduce the amount of fat that you're storing. Now it is 100% true. Insulin is the most anabolic fat storage hormone in the body. However, there are a large number, and last I saw, I'll find and I'll, I'll post it for you guys. There's a meta-analysis, which is a critical review of a large number of studies. And the meta-analysis came to a conclusion that uh, I believe it was over 11 different studies that were all conducted using isocaloric models of diet. So they gave, uh, in all these different studies, they gave two groups of individuals the same number of calories. And they gave one group uh, what would more closely resemble a high-fat, low-carb diet. And they gave the other group more of a high-carb, low-fat diet. And what they found in multiple studies and through the analysis of this uh, meta-analysis is that the weight loss was essentially the same. It was very, very similar, basically the same for statistical purposes between both groups, regardless of macronutrient ratio. And this proves that... Uh, Insulin does play a role in fat loss and fat gain, but it's not the primary method. And when you really break down um, things like lipogenesis and realizing that um, how carbohydrates are converted into fat by turning into sugar and then going to the liver and turning into triglycerides and, and therefore being uh, stored as fat in the body, uh, presuming they're not burned as energy, or the way that uh, dietary fats can also be converted to body fat and stored. At the end of the day, calories in, calories out is the most important factor in gauging your fat loss. And I presume if you're listening to this, that the majority of individuals uh, do need to lose some body fat. However, I will address a little bit later uh, what I call the pendulum model that I use when describing a diet in terms of how to either build muscle, lose fat, or do some combination of both, because you can do both at the same time. So I'm not knocking uh, ketogenic diets. I want to be very clear about that. I think ketogenic diets are a great way to improve uh, insulin sensitivity um, by greatly restricting carbohydrate intake. You're not going to have these huge swings in blood sugar energy. Most people that do keto, very, very level, steady energy throughout the day. It may not be best uh, depending on what type of exercise you do. Some exercise and some types of athletics, it's perfectly fine for. For others, it may not be as ideal. Um, great for insulin, but it's uh, also very restrictive. And because it's so restrictive, some people can stick to it very well, but I think the overwhelming majority of people that do very restrictive diets, regardless of macronutrient ratios are largely setting themselves up for long-term failure. Just my opinion. So I'm not knocking the ketogenic diet. I'm not knocking any certain diet, but rather making a point that there is no magic ratio of protein, carbs, and fat that makes fat loss happen. At the end of the day, it primarily comes down to calories in, calories out. With the food choices that you're making can affect your hormones. They can affect how you feel. They can affect your energy. Um, 
but a lot of that's going to come down to make sure you're getting all the micronutrients that you need and making sure that you are somewhat limiting uh, the amount of sugar that you intake. The pendulum model that I use for any individual who wants to build some degree of muscle or lose some degree of fat, uh, this particular model applies. So uh, picture a pendulum, or if you don't know exactly what a pendulum is, uh, picture a number line that we learned about in middle school math, right? And let's just zoom on one end of the number line. Let's just say, uh, let's just say the far left end. That's a very low calorie amount. And on the far right end, or the far right end of the pendulum swing, that's a very large caloric intake. And let's just say that the middle dead center, dead smack in the middle is the exact amount of calories that you need to maintain your current level of body fat. Anything to the left in that deficit will cause some degree of fat loss and anything to the right will cause some degree of fat gain. Now, when it comes to building muscle, building muscle is a physiological priority. It's a response to intense weight training and provided you give the body enough rest, but not too much, um, you can build muscle in a caloric deficit. There's a great documentary out there called I Want to Look Like That Guy, where a 40-something-year-old filmmaker trains with a pro bodybuilder for six months because he wants to look like the guy in those, um, in those muscle magazines. And he goes on a bodybuilding diet and type workout. And over the course of six months, he loses 50 pounds, but he actually, in the same time, gains about 10 pounds of muscle. So you can do both. It's just not necessarily as ideal an environment for building muscle in the body. Again, building muscle is a physiological response to intense weight training. Your weight training has to be so intense that your body views it as a threat to your survival. And then it overcompensates by the addition of muscle mass by stronger, bigger muscles. So for most people, what you need to do is you need to be in some degree of a caloric deficit if you need to lose fat. If you're trying to build muscle at the same time or if building muscle is your primary goal, you want to have that pendulum closer to the middle, maybe slightly to the right. If you are in a very, very slight caloric surplus, maybe one to 200 calories a day, uh, you are giving your body everything it needs to build as much muscle as physiologically possible provided you have a fairly balanced diet and give your body adequate rest. And you're also not going to gain too much additional fat. If you find that after a couple weeks, you haven't really seen any changes in the scale. What you're going to want to do is slightly bump up that number if you're trying to build some muscle. So if, you know, let's just say you start at burning 2000 calories a day and you decide you want to build some muscle, that's going to be your primary focus. You bump that up to 2,200 calories a day and you eat 2,200 calories a day, no more, no less. You follow that for a couple of weeks. Notice you really haven't gained any weight. Add another 200 calories to that, another 150, 200 calories. That slight incremental change over time will lead to additional muscle mass, provided you're uh, exercising with enough intensity and, and with enough consistency and giving your body enough rest. Likewise, if you need to prioritize fat loss, what I recommend is um, having some idea where your maintenance number of calories is, let's just say it's 2000 calories a day and taking a slight calorie cut from that 150 to 200 calories. So uh, 1800 calories to 1850 calories a day, eat that amount every single day and watch how your body responds. At some point, uh, the fat loss will stop. And at that point, you're going to have to take another small calorie cut. I want to address this idea that we have of a starvation mode. I don't buy into it. I tend to believe that we are going to burn approximately the same number of calories every single day with some minor variations based on activity. But what happens is fat is metabolically active, not too much, not as much as muscle. Muscle burns more fat and requires more energy every single day then uh, does an equivocal amount of fat. So when you lose fat, you're, yes, your metabolism does slow down, but it slows down slightly. So if you lose 10 pounds of fat, your metabolism might be a little bit slower. So you might need to eat a little bit less if you want to keep that fat loss going. One of the big problems people have is they tend to bottom out their calories too quickly, too soon. And, uh, 
what they often find is they eventually they have these cravings that are energy is really low because they're not eating enough. They might be on that end where they're not eating enough to even support the muscle that they already have, especially if they're exercising. And uh, in that particular case, they can lose muscle, they can lose fat, but their energy is just terrible because they're not getting enough. So uh, for most people, I recommend if you have some idea of what your maintenance is and, and 10 times your body weight is always kind of a good starting point, depending on your goals. If you want to build muscle, bump that up to uh, about 2,200 calories a day and follow that for a few weeks using whatever diet you want to follow. And we covered that yesterday. If you're trying to lose fat, cut that down to about 1,800 calories a day, track that for a couple weeks. And if you find you go maybe two, three weeks without losing any fat at all, take another 150 to 200 calorie cut from there. And same with the other. If you're trying to build muscle, um, add a very slight amount of calories to where you're presently at. And again, if you go another couple of weeks, you don't really have any changes in weight, add a little bit more. It's these small incremental changes adding up over a long period of time that creates fantastic results. You don't need to do anything crazy with your diet. Slamming an extra 500 calories a day or more, maybe a thousand calories a day over maintenance, it's just going to make you fat. You can only build so much muscle at a time. And likewise with fat loss, uh, if you take your calories too low, too quickly, you will continue to lose fat. Yes, but your energy might not be the best. You might feel kind of miserable. So, um, small changes. The beauty of the pendulum model is there's always some aspect of building muscle and losing fat, regardless of where you fall on that spectrum. If uh, building muscle is your primary concern, you ought to be as close to maintenance or maybe slightly over just to make sure that your strength is going up and you don't put on any unnecessary fat. If you're losing fat, you want to uh, eat as much food as possible while continually losing fat. And then because of your intense weight training, because of the rest and recovery, you'll be building some degree of muscle. Again, not only has it been proven uh, with that documentary, I want to look like that guy, but I would be more than happy to share with you guys a uh, former client that I had. Same thing, lost uh, 50 pounds in six months because he wanted to dress up as Captain America for a comic book convention. And while he was losing uh, this 50 pounds in six months, he doubled to tripled his strength on every single lift that we have. And I still have those workout journals. So his bench press went from uh, 135 to, I believe, about 250. His squat went from 185 to 315. And his uh, deadlift went from, I believe, 185 to 405. And this is in six months uh, while losing fat, fat loss was the primary goal that we were doing, but he still built a very significant degree of strength in that time. And if you're building strength, especially on that scale, you're building muscle to some degree. Again, you don't have to make this process as complicated as we tend to as people. Calories in, calories out is the primary method of fat loss and fat gain. Eating different foods can affect your energy, can affect how you feel, and can slightly affect your metabolism. Uh, nothing against certain diets. Pick whatever diet you want, but identify your goal, fat loss or muscle gain, uh, and then pick a calorie amount, track accordingly, and then make the necessary adjustments that I've covered to uh, ensure that you're consistently meeting your goals. And again, there's no magic ratio of protein, carbs, and fat. Remember the pendulum model. And again, you don't need a surplus of calories to build muscle. So with uh, that being said, with calories being covered, let me know how you are going to track calories, portions, and carbs. I highly recommend tracking calories, but I understand it's not for everybody. Some people just want to count carbs. That's fine if it's working for them. If not, they might have to tighten things up a little bit. If you're counting points, doing something like Weight Watchers, that's also fine. Um, but again, if your weight loss stalls, you might have to make a slight adjustment to that. Or maybe just count portions. Again, everybody enjoys doing something a little bit different. My job is to help you do what you're already doing at a higher level. Thanks for listening today, guys. This has been day eight of the diet. I will talk to you tomorrow. Correction, this has been day nine of diet. I will talk to you tomorrow.